So today I wanted to speak with you about some things to think about before you decide to have plastic surgery. The tips that I'm going to go over with you today can actually go for any type of surgery. However, specifically, I wanted to speak about those who are thinking about having plastic surgery. Now, if you've been following my journey, you know that I've had plastic surgery starting in 2015, being my weight loss surgery for vertical sleeve gastrectomy, where I lost over 100 pounds. Then in 2017, I decided to get the loose skin taken off, having a paniculectomy. And then in 2020, I had lipo 360 BBL journey which I actually just posted not too long ago, about a week ago, I posted my second post for that. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll go ahead and link it for you here. Go ahead and take a quick look at that video as well. But today, I wanted to talk to you about things that I feel like are really important to understand and wrap your mind around before you decide to go ahead and get surgery. Now, I have a list of things here that I thought was really important to touch on, but I don't have them in any certain type of order. So I'm just gonna kind of go down the line. If one... So the first thing I feel, um, it's important to, to understand is what surgery you're having and what that surgery can do for you. A lot of people come into plastic surgery thinking that they're gonna have this body type specific to like maybe an Instagram model that they saw or maybe a wish pic that they saw. They're gonna find that body type in particular and that's what the doctor is gonna give them. And that doesn't happen necessarily for everybody. Everybody is made differently. Everybody has different DNA. Everybody's bone structure is different. Skin toxicity is different. So with those things in mind, your, your results will come out to be different because that's just how your body and your makeup is. Nothing to do with the surgeon, nothing to do with your post-op care or anything yet, just specifically how your body and your structure is made. So it's really important to understand that your DNA is gonna make a, make a big difference in the results that you may have in comparison to others. Now, with that being said, other factors you gotta think about and take into account are the surgeon you choose, as well as your po post-op care. It's really, really, really important to make sure you follow your surgeon's post-op instructions. They give you the instructions for a reason, not just to, you know, just to throw them out there. Every surgeon has different instructions and it's important to listen to your surgeon's instructions because the way that your surgeon does surgery is completely different than the way the surgeon does, does surgery. So the post-op care for this one may not be the same as um, your surgeon. So it's really important to listen to what your surgeon and your surgical team tells you to do with your post-op care. So it's really important to research into post-op care before you decide to go and get your surgery. Um, make sure you set realistic expectations. Like I was saying earlier, everyone's body is different. If you know you had four or five children and you decide to go ahead and have life with 360, um, and you're wanting to have a snatched waist, but you already know your stomach is kind of big and it's stretched out, you have stretch marks, understand that Lipo 360 is not weight loss surgery and Lipo 360 is not going to get rid of that skin that you're most likely looking to get rid of. Lipo 360 is just going to take some of the fat out of your body to, to make the, the proportions around your body a little bit, um, a little bit more even. So it's going to take out the fat, but it's not going to take out the skin. It's almost like having weight loss surgery in a way because it's going to take the fat really, really quickly, and then you're going to be left with nothing but skin. And that's exactly what happens when you have weight loss surgery. You lose weight so fast, it melts off, and you're left with all the skin. Now, um, the difference between weight loss surgery and Lipo 360 is weight loss surgery, you actually lose weight. You're going to lose weight. You're going to lose a lot of weight, and you're going to lose a lot of fat. Like with 360, you're just losing fat. You're not gonna really lose much weight. It's just gonna be taking a little bit of fat, you know, taking maybe 10 pounds you might lose. That's all it really is. So make sure you set realistic expectations and understand what it is you're going to get in the end result with that type of surgery. So if you're looking to have a surgery that's gonna get rid of a lot of skin, you need to look into tummy tuck or a paniculectomy. A tummy tuck, obviously, they, you know, they take off the skin, but they also do muscle repair. Paniculectomy only removes the loose skin. So if you're looking to have a nice, snatched, clean waistline, I would suggest doing a tummy tuck or looking into a tummy tuck surgeon or someone who does both and not just like with 360 because you're gonna be very disappointed when you come off the table and your stomach is left with all the skin and you're thinking it's gonna be snatched. When in most cases it's not if you have a lot of stomach or skin to begin with. Um, Make sure you're mentally ready. Like this is a huge deal, a huge step you're about to take. 
like no matter what surgery it is you're doing, whether it's weight loss surgery, whether it's a skin removal, whether it's Lipo 360, whether it's a Brazilian butt lift, there are so many things that come along with surgery and you have to be mentally prepared. And I think this has to be like one of the biggest things I can tell you or suggest to you is to really get your mind mentally ready. And I'm not just saying it just to say it, like literally research and make sure you are ready because it is going to be an emotional roller coaster. For instance, I have, I am one month post-op today for my Lipo 360 BBL. And one day I wake up and I'm like in love with my results. And then the next day I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I see it, but it's not what I want it to be because I have swelling. Um, one minute I'm not sore at all and I can do all I want. And the next minute I'm very tired. I don't have any energy. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a roller coaster. It's a mental roller coaster. And knowing that you have to wait to see your results just makes it so hard with this surgery in particular. Um, so I'm like always like, oh my gosh, what if my butt doesn't do this? Or, you know, what if I completely lose my butt that I just paid for? What, you know, there's, there's, there's all these things you're thinking in your head, like what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, and you constantly do that. And then, you know, thinking about the recovery and, and, you know, there's just so many things you're gonna worry about. So you really need to make sure that you're mentally ready and mentally prepared to take on this surgery that you're planning on doing. Every surgery has a recovery process, recovery time. You're gonna have downtime. You need to make sure you mentally are prepared for this surgery and what it's going to entail in the end because there is work you have to put into your surgeries. So with all my surgeries, yeah, I would say all of my surgeries. Uh, the first one, not as much, but definitely my paniculectomy in this one, there, are, there is a lot of itching. And itching is almost worse than pain. Like I didn't have much pain with my last surgery. Um, but the itching is like almost unbearable sometimes where I just have to rip my faha off because it, I just itch so bad. Um, so understand that you're going to itch there's really nothing you can do about it benadryl doesn't really i mean people take benadryl but benadryl is for like itching from like a breakout or something not necessarily itching from your skin repairing itself if you get what i'm saying like you know so what i do for for my itching is put on my bio oil and have a dry brush to kind of brush off the dead skin cells. And that's what I do to try to maintain and combat the itching that I have going on a lot. So most surgeries, most plastic surgeries, at least for paniculectomy and for my weight and for my uh, Lipo 360 BBL, itching like crazy. Um, so be prepared for that. There's gonna be lots of changes with your body tons of changes with your body and all three of my surgeries there was tons of changes i started off really really big and then i got really 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 small and then mentally i thought i was like still big because you know you're so used to feeling a certain type of way like mentally you you just don't know you don't know if what you're seeing in the mirror is real and you kind of like doubt what you're seeing and thinking like okay well i'm still big i can i, I just need to lose like 10 more pounds but your body is going to change so much so when i had my weight loss surgery i got down really really low i think the lowest i got was like 150 155 pounds and even at that point at that time i was like I can lose like 10 more pounds. Like I need to get down to 150 and I'll be good. 150 and I'll be good. And my husband was like, Brittany, you don't need to lose any more weight. Like you don't. And I'm like, Clinton, yes, I do. I still have like the sides, the sides, you know, get, I want to get the sides. And then I ended up gaining a little weight, lost it, had my paniculectomy. After having my paniculectomy is when I really buckled down and wanted to lose, lose, you know, the last 10 pounds. And then I ended up getting pregnant. You know, this is a big timeline, time, a big time gap. I ended up getting pregnant. And as I started to gain the weight and looking back at my old pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, I was so small. And the fact that I thought I needed to lose more weight was just ridiculous. And my body changed so much from being like really big to really, really small to now a, you know, healthy pregnancy. And then to afterwards losing my baby weight. But now, you know, I was able to stay and maintain a healthy looking body i wasn't too skinny i wasn't too big i was just a really nice average size and my body changed a lot um you're going to go through swelling so it's you're going to swell really really bad and you're going to look really bloated you're going to feel bloated you're going to feel big but when the swelling goes down things will get better your body's going to change so much with that with swelling and 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 um and when it goes down so swelling 
for all of my surgeries lasted a long time. Swelling for this surgery, I would have to say is the worst. My swelling with my weight loss surgery, I had it, but it's kind of hard to tell the swelling with that one because for that one, they actually got to like blow up your stomach and there's like all this fluid inside of it. So it's, it's kind of different, the feeling of that swelling versus the swelling for this one. My swelling from paniculectomy, I had it, but it wasn't that bad. This swelling with Lipro 360 is much different. And um, I think it's just because technically all of my fat is gone. So I'm swelling in areas where I really don't have any fat. So it's really, really sore. It bulges like on my sides are the worst. It bulges on the side and it's a little hard from the swelling. And it's just really, really, really uncomfortable. Um, and honestly, I cannot wait for the swelling to go down. I'm tired of being swelling and swell, I'm swelling on my sides. I'm tired of the swelling on my back. Um, you just want to see results and you can't really see it with your swelling. And the swelling just seems like it's not going to go away. I know with my weight loss surgery, I was would randomly swell up, up into a year. So I already know what to expect with this. I'm gonna be swelling for, for a long time. I'm gonna have a, a be swelling for a, lot, a long time. So that's just something to make sure you are aware of and you are ready for. Um, I touched on this earlier, not everyone's results are the same. So don't compare your results to somebody else's result and be like, you know, discouraged because you don't look like the person next to you. Everyone's different. Um, and honestly, there was a girl that I used to look at and I was like, oh, I want my results to look like her. I want to look like her. She looks so good, y'all. And then mine came out and it wasn't just like hers, but I still like, okay, well, you look good. You know, why did I look like her? You look good. You, you know, everyone has their own body frame. Everything, everybody's body is meant to look different. So the way that my butt sits on me and fits on me now is different than what it will fit on the next person. So my butt is fit for me, you know? <clears throat> next thing to think about is the surgeon you're gonna choose. Um, my surgeon in particular, and I'm not gonna go into deep details about my, uh, my surgeon, I have a whole nother video for that, but my surgeon in particular, um, I was following him for years and that's why I ended up going with him. You need to make sure that you look and research into the person that you are going to trust your life with because essentially that is what you are doing. You are trusting this person with your life. You need to look into their reviews. You need to look on Real Self. You need to look on um, Instagram. Uh, you need to look on Google. Like there's so many resources out there to be able to look into these, these physicians to make sure that they are qualified to do the surgery they're going to be doing on you, um, have had good results, and have not had any mortality rates um one thing i'm going to touch on really really quick is a lot of girls try to go really 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 cheap because of course if you can get good results with and save your money um why wouldn't you and unfortunately some of them have been paying the price for it, especially here recently um where they have actually been dying from doctors um who have been charging us really low rates because the way that they do their surgeries are completely different than some of the other other known phys uh, physicians here do their surgery. So like I know some girls in the DR have died recently um, from a specific doctor, I'm not gonna name his name, um, but died recently and it's because of the way that the doctor does the procedures. Make sure you look into your procedure that you're having done and the technique, the proper technique and the way that it's supposed to be done to know that your surgeon's doing it exactly right. Make sure you have your compression garments and uh, multiple compression garments if you can um, for your actual surgeries. All of my surgeries, I had to have some type of compression. With my weight loss surgery, actually when my weight, when my weight loss surgery, I didn't, I don't think I had a compression. My paniculectomy, I had a, a binder, which is kind of like a wrap around your stomach. And then with my Lipo 360 BBL, I had a Faha. And it's nice to have multiple because you're gonna to have to wash one. And especially with this surgery now, I have to stay in mine. So when I wash one, I have another one to put on. Um, so it's good to have multiple and to look into the quality of the garment you're gonna be getting for your post-op care. Have a good support team. I know that's hard for some people because some people were um, are not as fortunate as others to have people who are there to support you. But try to find at least 
somebody. Even if it's not a family, friend, or relative, find somebody that you follow on YouTube. Find somebody that you are, you know, friends with on Instagram or Facebook. Somebody who can relate to you and who is willing to listen to you and you can vent to and just, you know, have someone to come to about your concerns with your surgery or just to have someone follow your journey. It's really nice to have people to support you. I'm lucky enough that most of my family um, supported me um, in my journey completely. My husband 100% supports me in my journey and he always has whatever makes me happy. Um, so I, it's really good to have people who support you and push you through those hard days because you are going to have really hard days. And my husband is definitely my backbone. Um, with that being said, wave hi to your haters because they're going to come. I had haters before I even did my surgeries. Like they were already saying stuff. And then when they found out I was having surgery, it was just like, so much talk and so much, you know, eyes looking at you and rolling and staring at you and whatever. And honey, when you get your body snatched, okay, look, I already told y'all already know my motto. I'm good down what nobody says. I do what I want to do. I always have and I always will. But when my body got snatched, girl, who? <laughs> who? What you gonna say? You been what can, huh? What can you say? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they can't say nothing. So go ahead and give a little hi to your haters. Hi, hater. I see you over there. Yeah, you. I see you. Yeah, so be, be, be prepared and don't let it bother you. You know, we all gotta have, we all gotta have haters. It's okay. It's nice to have them. They let you know you're doing something right. Okay, so make sure you take enough time to recover. A lot of people think that you can just get up and jump. Like when I was looking into this surgery, a lot of people said two weeks off is all you need for the recovery process of this surgery. Kind of, sort of, yeah, maybe. Um, two weeks off could be okay at the minimum, but your body's gonna go through a lot of changes. You're really, really, really drained. Like I was really drained after my surgery. Um, so if you could take off more time, then I would say do it. I think I'm lucky because right now, obviously it's COVID-19. So I'm working from home. So I'm, I was able to recover on my own time. But for those of you who like, there's a lot of girls I know that had to go back to work in three days after having their surgery. You're not even supposed to sit on your ass for six to eight weeks. Um, and you're not supposed to drive for, I think, like two weeks. So to have to sit on your butt to go to work and stuff, like, I, it just would have been too much for me. My first week, I was like so drained. Every little thing I did had me tired. So just make sure you're taking time to recover if, if you can. And, and if you can't, just try to do the best that you can. Make sure you, re you research into the possible complications that can happen with your surgery because there are possible complications. Every surgery has complications um, or potential for complications. So just make sure you look into what those risks are that you're, that you're taking and make sure that you're actually willing to take those risks because let's be real, the potential is you could die if something was to happen, something was to go wrong. Um, the chances of that are slim, but they are a chance. So just make sure you look into that and you're, and you're real with yourself about that. You will spend a lot of money. These surgeries are not cheap, okay? They're not cheap. They're a lot of money. They range anywhere from like $4,000 up to $15,000, $20,000, depending on what you're getting. And that's just for the surgery. And then afterwards, you have post-op care that you have to worry about and spend money on. So you're, pay you're paying for your garments and you're paying for your medications and you're paying for your massages and you're, you're paying for, you know, like new clothes. Like there's a lot of stuff that comes into your surgery. So make sure you are financially prepared for the surgery before you actually go through with the surgery because a lot of people don't think or, or take into the account the back you know the back expenses you're gonna you're gonna pay for with having these surgeries um a lot of girls for this surgery in particular get massages and a lot of them are having to spend like thousands of dollars a month for massages i'm lucky i was able to find a lymphatic massage specialist here in fredericksburg and i I get to see her twice a week for 30 minutes at a time and I only pay $40 each session and she's really, really good. So there are affordable lymphatic massage specialists out there for those who are having Lipo360 BBL. My recommendations to you is to Google lymphatic massage specialist, not massage therapy, not, not, not anything else. Lymphatic 
drainage massage therapist. That's what you need to Google and you will find you somebody affordable in your area. The last thing I just want to let you know is it's a confidence booster. You are going to feel so good about yourself because regardless of how your results completely turn out, you are going to be smaller than what you were. And if your results turn out exactly like you want them to, like it's just going to make you feel so much better about yourself. Not saying that you don't feel good about yourself now. Before I had any of my surgeries, I felt good about myself. I was very confident. I was, you know, beautiful. Like, couldn't nobody tell me nothing. But I knew what I wanted for myself. And when I got to where I wanted to be, like, my confidence skyrocketed. And not like, oh, she's stuck up type of, you know, confidence. But, like, I carry myself with, like, okay, you could tell that's a bad, beautiful, black woman. That's how I carry myself. And, um... Just be, just be prepared for that. Your confidence is going to skyrocket. It may make people feel uncomfortable. Your significant other might feel uncomfortable. Mine, he's so he's so comfortable. He loves it. He loves the way I look. Um, but yeah, so this video ended up being a little bit longer than I wanted to be, but I had a lot to tell y'all. Just a little quick tips really quick here. Um, but yeah, if y'all haven't seen my BBO journey, um, I will make sure I have it linked down below for you. I have part one and part two posted already. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that and make sure you hit that bo uh, bell notification. That way, you know, when I post new videos, I'm posting new videos every week and, um, I will see you all in my next video. If you have any questions for me, anything specific you want to know about any of my surgeries, make sure you leave it in the comment box below and you follow all of my social media. That way you can stay in touch with me. I post all of my updates on my Instagram daily. Um, and yeah, so I will see you all in my next video.